Hey guys, welcome to today's episode, and I'm so excited. One of my favorite people ever to interview is Mama Z, or aka Sabrina Zelensky. She is a natural health guru, and people call her Mama Z because she is a mom that comes up with all kinds of natural ways to care for your family. She's a co-author of the book, The Essential Oils Diet, The Essential Oils Apothecary, and she's done so many amazing recipes. You've got to look at her courses online. And so we are so excited that you're here. Welcome, Mama Z. Hey, thank you so much for having me back. Yeah, and I'm so excited that I'm going to get to see you in person. She's going to come down in person for an amazing concert that we're going to have here in Virginia Beach. If you're in the area, we have Kim Walker-Smith coming, and she's going to come live to that, which we're so excited about. So I can counting down the days until that happens. So one of the things that I love is just your routine, like, I am one of the most routine people I know. I mean, I am like, do this every single day. And I really do do it. And a lot of people, you know, talk about the morning routine. It's like such a big thing. But I feel like they, a lot of people don't do it. Like they talk about it, (laughs) but they don't actually do it. And you are one of the few people I know, don't just talk about it. You really do it. And You do so many detoxifying things and so many great things for the lymphatic system. So I wanted you to give a kind of a glimpse of what does a daily life look like for you? And what do you do specifically for detoxing and helping your lymphatic system? Perfect. Well, of course, I try to start out as soon as I wake up. And um, and so now that we have baby number six, um, he's usually nursing. So I'll while I'm nursing him for 10 minutes, I usually put, I have a bio mat. So I usually run that, which is like eight to 10 minutes in the morning. And then the very first thing that I do is I start with my oil pulling. And so if you're doing a lot of good detoxification, you always want to, um, even though you're doing the same things every day, you do want to switch up some of the oils so your body doesn't get used to it, just like you don't do the same exercises at the gym every day. You go to the gym every day, but not the same exercises. So like I like to do frankincense, myrrh and clove, uh, clove and peppermint, an immunity blend and peppermint during like the beginning of our allergy season, lemon, lavender and peppermint or lemon, lavender, peppermint and tea tree. And so what you do is you take a teaspoon to a tablespoon of raw organic coconut oil, and then you add one to three drops of essential oils to it. So, you know, for a lot of people, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to remember to do all that. Well, you can always use like a little ice cube tray and also preset um, your, you know, oil pulling stuff and then pop those out like in a silicone tray, put them in a bag and put them in the freezer because all of it's going to melt within your in your mouth in a couple of minutes. So people are like, oh, that is so gross. I don't want to put oil in my mouth. Well, if you think of it like mouthwash instead of oil in your mouth, then it it's going to become liquid rather fast, especially with the essential oils. And so that's going to pull some of those deep toxins um, out of your body, especially through your mouth. You know, your mouth is kind of like the window that's why, like, when you go to the dentist, they can catch other things that are are linked to sickness and disease through your mouth. So um, I've also been able to do this to have um, I had a, a tooth that was it had um, the uh, old fillings from back in the day. And I had had the filling changed out and the amalgam taken out. And um, the dentist at the time left a fragment in there and it had started to decay. And the dentist that I went to, because I was noticing like the color was turning darker. And so I started oil pulling and like the tooth literally like came back. And um, when I went in there, thank God I had done that because um, he said it was so close to me losing that tooth. And I still have those teeth. And um, so it's it, just proper care. But getting those 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 toxins out of your body. So when you do that, you want to swish for 15 to 30 minutes. So I always tell people, you know, I always make my bed every day, every single day. I never not make my bed. Um, You know, I have certain things that I do in the morning, setting up breakfast for the other kids and 
all of that stuff within that time frame. So it's not like you're just sitting there swishing oil around. So I try to be really, really um, intentional uh, with the oil pulling. And then um, I like to do a saltwater flush. And some so that I stay on that for a second because I want to make sure people heard what you said because yeah. I think that's so good. So you can like go and just buy the ice trays. What you're saying is put the coconut oil in the ice trays, yes. then add the essential oil in each of the drops and tell how many drops of each would you say so we're doing. Yeah. So when people start out, I say, okay, go ahead and start out with a teaspoon. So what I do is, again, you don't want to, when you take your coconut oil, you don't, I, we don't use a microwave for anything at any time ever. So you take a warm sink of water because it will change the molecular structure of your coconut oil. So I, I put that coconut oil in the sink warm, like as hot as the sink will go. And then I wait till that the coconut oil is liquid. And then you can just take a little measuring spoon and then drop it in all of your silicone um, uh, ice cube tray. And then you do your essential oils. So depending on what I'm doing, if I'm so if you have a teaspoon of oil, like you're just starting out, like I do a tablespoon now, but a teaspoon, you only want to do one drop of essential oils. If you want to go to a tablespoon, you can do up to three. So if I'm let's say I'm going to do three um, three different essential oils. I would put a drop of each one of them in there, or you can make yourself up a blend, your oil pulling blend, and then um, put, you know, just do one drop of that blend in there. Same kind of thing. So um, I, I've done it both ways. Um, if I'm going to use an immunity blend and peppermint, then I will have my immunity blend. My immunity blend is equal parts of cinnamon, uh, clove, eucalyptus, lemon, orange, and rosemary. So I use that for a lot of things. And then, um, so that is a blend that we make up and we have on hand all the time. We make so much hand sanitizer over there, healthy hand sanitizer. And so we utilize that a lot of times for, for those things as well as hand soap. Each one of my kids' classrooms has one of the Mama Z approved that I make hand soap and hand sanitizer and so does the um the kitchen at um the lunchroom so they, they know like that and, and i've given every single teacher like i let them know there's free refills on all my gifts so um like i will have them give me you know and i make blends for the teachers and have given them diffusers so like they utilize essential oils in many ways in the classroom as well so that immunity blend is super powerful and it's wonderful for oil pulling. So you're just going to put one to three drops in depending on how much coconut oil that you have in there. And then, um, and depending on what your purpose is. So if you're really during that, you know, first part of where pollen is all over the place, lemon, orange, or um, uh, lemon, lavender, and um, peppermint is the way to go. And then if you need kind of like a, um, a, plus D, uh, uh, you know, really, if you got a lot of histamines going, then I will add tea tree to that mix. So I have one um, allergy blend that's uh, lemon, lavender, and peppermint, and one that's lemon, lavender, peppermint, and um, tea tree, depending if you need that, if your sinuses are filled. And that really helps. Yeah. And I will tell you a friend of mine, which I don't think it's, it's, you know, my favorite would be like wild orange, lemon, and peppermint. And yeah. mix that with a tablespoon of coconut oil. But yeah, like if I'm in, like if I have an infection or some kind of sick, sickness, I'll come maybe add some, you know, clove or cinnamon oil. But for one time, a friend of mine told me to try oregano oil. I think it's I don't like the taste of it, but she's like it will really help boost your immune system. And so that that is also an idea. And I think a great way to get yourself in the habit of this is that if you do a morning devotional for 20 minutes, because it kind of is like, okay, this is my morning devotional time. It Everyone knows my mouth is like full. They know I'm in this special seat and then I can do it every time in there. It's like a game changer. If you can create that habit, of doing that oil pulling every single day, it is a game changer. It is. And I will tell you, my kids, um, like they've seen me oil pull so many times because some of them wake up as early as I do. 
And um, and so I saw Bella when she was like two years old. She was walking around going like this. You know, she she was saying oil pulling with her mouth like and she wasn't oil pulling, but it was just so funny. Um, And, you know, so it's just kind of a culture. It's the culture that you create in your household. And that is one of the things that I think is really important. You know, my kids, um, uh, they grow up learning, you know, that we brush our teeth a couple times a week with activated charcoal and how we incorporate that with our toothpaste. And yes, there's ones that are preset, um, but I take the internal cleansing grade um, of um, activated charcoal, a very high quality one, and I mix it with my toothpaste. And so the kids beg for that. And we talk about, you know, detoxification, of course, in the mouth. And so we do that twice a week. And of course, that's going to help your teeth also be whiter because you're pulling those extra toxins on your teeth that can be staining. And um, and so we do that regular regularly as well. Again, easy type of thing to incorporate. Um, um, I, I know we were talking beforehand about products and products that are, you know, toxic for the house. Um, in my class, the um, for the healthy home makeover, um, you know, we try to do it all toxic free. So it's called the toxic free healthy home makeover. Talking about detoxing the um, the biggest areas of our life that have toxins. So our laundry room, our kitchen, our bathroom, um, our pantry, and our garden spaces. So we try to, and, and of course, our kitchen. You know, is is like the place where everything happens for us. And so going piece by piece so that it is systematically easy to do because, you know, we do make our own hand soap and we do make our own shampoo and conditioner and other um, elements that we use, but we're not doing that every day. Uh, You know, when something is done, then we mix it back up and then, you know, put it back into circulation. And we're always changing the, um, the essential oils that we use with each thing as the seasons change, as our needs change. And um, and having that work within our family. Um, I love that. And I just I love the idea because one thing about the essential oils, if you already do it all up and put it in the freezer, it will ensure that you actually put the oils in. Because Sometimes it's like just another step to do. And in the morning you're tired. It just kind of frees that step up. OK, so after oil pulling, what's next? Okay, so what's next is I do I do a salt water flush. Um, the very first time I did what was called um, the the master cleanse, and um, it's this yellow book with green tree on it. Um, and um, it, he talked about washing your insides like you wash your outsides, and um, it was it's a very gentle cleanse that you do in the morning. It's because uh, I use unidized sea salt when I do it, and I spoke about it in our book, The Essential Oils Diet. But I, you do um, two teaspoons of unidized sea salt in four cups of as hot of water as you can stand. Um, now, you as a as an O blood type like I am, you can do more because our bodies actually need more salt. And um, but y- you do it, and and that's like the first thing before you eat, like after I do oil pulling, and it it's just a gentle cleanse of the bowels. And because I use my magnesium regularly, and I like one that's highly absorbable, I do not take um, tablets or capsules of that. I, I my favorite is um, the uh, the Calmful Muscles because it does have beet extract in it as well as the magnesium. And I do that at night, and I also do that usually after a workout, mid morning or mid afternoon. The thing about magnesium is it is going to bind. Uh, it's a binder, so you want it to bind to the lactic acid and take it out of your body. So you really need to make sure you're not doing it when you're eating and you're not doing it when you're taking supplements. Um, and then so you, I usually pick mid-morning or mid-afternoon and then right before bed. And so that's going to get things moving out of that lymphatic system while your body is in that rest and digest mode at night. And then in the morning, that saltwater flush just helps finish the package. And that's that's kind of step two for me. And I have tried doing this. I did this for a little while and I just hated it so much. But I think I'm, I, the results are amazing. I think I'm just going to 
go back to doing it. I think I just have to just say it is what it is. I'll get used to it because it's not I don't think it's not fun by any means. Like the oil pulling so easy. Yeah. This one is definitely harder. De- definitely harder. Um, I have found I've used so many different unidized sea salts that there are ones that just taste better and it's where they source it. I try not to use um, Revins um, and some of the other ones that have uh, particles in there because that will stop some of the that has like the, it's kind of like a zero balance. You really want it to just flush. You don't want to like take in all these extra nutrients at that time because you're just going to flush them out. So I really make sure um, the Hain brand of sea salt, you have to make sure it's not iodized. It's unidized. So it's just sea salt. Um, I like the Hain brand. Um, and that's probably one of the purest ones that has a decent, um, um, I would say not after aftertaste because I'm so used to it, but it definitely has a better, more mild taste than some of the other salts that I've used. Mm, I love it. Okay. What's next? Okay. So um, I love starting my day out with um, uh, my living fuel shakes. I, I love that. Um, I find that that's amazing. And, 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 you know, especially for your picky eaters like my Bella, you know, she has just fallen in love with smoothies. And to have a supersonic smoothie that has your greens and your super reds and that kind of thing. I think is really powerful because that's really where, you know, it starts the day. It breaks the fast, so to speak. And um, and and it all depends, you know, what your goal is. But I, that, I do that um, every day. And I love that that combination. I love what's in it. I used to, I'm, I mean, I've made my own super greens, um, you know, for years and super reds. But for people, we always say, if you don't have time to DIY, these are some of your other um, uh, options and stuff like that. And so um, I know I know that you have promoted living fuel and that's such a good um, a good way to really boost your immune system and well, uh, kick I everything off. Say, yeah, I will say this. So we went down for a Christmas party. I went over to Sabrina's and she had this amazing Christmas party. And we have a friend of ours who owns living fuel and he had me taste um <laughs> and we call, I call it swamp water at my house. That's literally that taste. Like when I say on a scale of one to 10, it's a 20 about how bad it tastes. And it's actually, I've been taking it now since Christmas. I've been taking it consistently. It's now instead of a 20 bad, it's probably about an 11 bad. Like that's how I feel. It's just, it's not good in any way, shape, or form. Um, but now I you can dress it like, up. You can, yeah, you can. You can, you can, but I just take it. I just like, yeah. yeah. It. Um, but I will put a video of this. Actually, we have a video of you doing it and me and the kids doing it. So, <laughs> But it's a game changer, honestly, in your health because it it's got so many crazy nutrients in it. But that I do that every single morning now. That swamp water, yes. So now on the mornings that, um, so I always was a five a.m. workout girl, um, and so you know, typically I'll when I, I do my oil pulling and that kind of thing. If and now that my daughter is a little older. We work out with her a few days out of the week um, uh, later in the afternoon because she gets out of school. So and we do it together. So on the days that I'm working out at 5 a.m. in the morning, I do my salt water on the way home because I figure I do not like to have any dead time. I make sure that I'm multitasking at every turn. So, you know, when I'm doing my oil pulling, I'm setting up for breakfast, I'm getting everything that I didn't already put in the car the night before, all of that stuff. And then I go to the gym and drink my salt water on the way back, do my my shake when I get home. Um, on the days that I don't, then I'm, you know, I'm incorporated, like I just m- missed the step of driving home. So I'm, I'm getting other things ready, putting things um, away in the dishwasher. And um, and then I'm, I'm drinking my stuff. So once I get the kids going, um, then when I take my shower, you know, all of the things that I use in the shower are really important too for for detoxifying um, and the lymphatic system, everything from dry brushing to um, 
I make a a body product that um, is a body wash and that has um, essential oils that help to um, do fat burning. I rotate those because there's lots of different ones. You know, you can you could just use uh, peppermint if you wanted to. But when you incorporate um, grapefruit and lemon and some of those other things, that's really, really important. Um, when I do my fat burning uh, body wash in the shower, then I actually take it's called a fat massager. I sent you one in your little care package, but it's like a little brush and it has little knobs on it that are um, wooden or silicone. It all depends. I like the silicone ones. Um, the wooden ones work just as good. Um, but I'm always because I came from a house with black mold, I'm always very concerned about black mold and mold getting into things. So that's why I usually prefer something that is a little bit more waterproof. Um, and so then you want, what you want to do is you want to take care of some of the areas that you um, that are some of your work zones, like your thighs, your butt, your flanks, your arms, um, your stomach, uh, your buns, whatever areas that you're trying to work on, um, you know, to um, improve, then you want to you want to make sure that you have good um, circulation in those areas. So by utilizing essential oils that can actually help speed up the pace and you're really giving that um, lymphatic system a work. And um, and when you're on those muscles, uh, I try to make sure, um, you know, because at first when I started learning about, um, you know, like the fascia and all of those things, um, it was like, okay, my muscles are sore. I happen to have sore muscles. Okay, this really works. And then I started noticing that it was really helping with all of the extra like fat and cellulite. And there was other things that you could do and incorporate essential oils to almost have it be like that extra strength version of it. And so again, you're going to maximize while you're in there. So of course, making sure that and this, everybody hates me when I say this because a lot of people are all focused on food, but your skin is your biggest organ. So making sure that the products that you use are great and literally avoiding artificial fragrances like the plague, like no perfume. And when I say that, people get mad at me. Like they, I have had people say, what? No candles, no perfume, no this. And it's like, in nature, God has given us so many other alternatives. Like you smelled my coffee vanilla body cream. Like the past. who would need anything else, you know? I mean, and maybe that's not your fragrance. Maybe there's something else. But this is all utilizing pure organic essential oils. So, you know, it's it's a different thing when you're doing that versus something that's synth synthetically made in a lab because that has been known to literally interrupt hormones, like literally interrupt them. And so some people are more susceptible than others. But if you're, you know, living on Bath and Body Works in your house and putting toxic chemicals on your body all day long, you have like incubated your whole system and your body needs to detox. And that is like one of the first areas that I really like to go to because, yes, we can work on the food and all of that stuff. But if you're just doing the food and not the other aspect for the biggest organ in your body, then we've missed the bus completely. So I, I think that part is really important. Um, one of the other things that I incorporate, uh, the other things I incorporate throughout the week, not just the working out because I work out six times a week um, plus. Uh, because our family also runs in a running club together as well. Um, but I love vibrational therapy, red light therapy. And I actually have my red light therapy machine um, hanging above where I have vibration plates. Um, because a lot of the gyms out there have this like thing in the corner. It's called Beauty Angel that like I whenever I've gone into gyms that have a beauty angel, like it's not being used and it literally incorporates red light therapy and vibration all together. So um, because, you know, I'm not going to put a big booth in my house. I was like, well, let's just see what we can do about that. So my vibration plates are even more intense. I have a 4D Rumble X vibration plate platform. So it vibrates, it goes forward and backward and it shakes. And sometimes it does it all at one time. And then I have the red light therapy, which 
when and usually I do that um like at least two to three times a week. You can do it more. Um, my kids like to do push-ups on the um, vibration plates and and my boys are like, you know, they love doing that because it's just going to give them that added benefit and that extra strength. Um, but that really helps to like stir that stuff up. So when you're doing these other things, you're moving it out of your body. You're constantly in and, in and out, in and out because, you know, my girlfriend, um, oops, sorry, my girlfriend who um, uh, she passed away she, um, many years ago, she had had cancer. She was totally cancer free um, because they, the doctors had actually told her to go home and die. And she went home and did all natural therapies. And that's what healed her. And then she went back to that same doctor and they put her on immunotherapy. And then her digestive system stopped working. Like she'd eat food. She wouldn't go to the bathroom. She wasn't cycling things out. And wouldn't you know, she ended up, they, they said, oh my gosh, we're going to have to go in and take a piece of your colon. Oh my goodness, we're going to have to go back in and take another piece of your colon. And then it got to the point where they were like, um, now we're going to have to give you a colostomy bag and now go, go ahead and go home and die. And she actually died of starvation, not of cancer. And so it's really important that when we put stuff in our body, that it comes out of our body too. And, you know, some people are like, oh, I'm a once a week pooper. Whoa. If you are a once a week pooper, we got some major problems we got to deal with over here. Or yeah. even every other day. Exactly. And every other day. Even, even a once a day pooper. Yeah, that's it's not enough. I want before we move on uh to pooping, because that's a topic in itself, I want to talk yeah. about air fresheners for a second because the artificial yeah. fragrances. My husband calls me Toucan Sam. He said that I can literally smell anything. He bought me a gift certificate for this place called Stretch Lab. And it was basically where they just stretch you. And I was like, oh, that sounds fun. So I walk in and they literally have plug-in air fresheners in like three or four different places. I could, walked in and I couldn't even breathe. And I told them, I said, okay, if you want me to continue, I'm so sorry, but I have to have you take all those air fresheners out. Yeah. We have to open the door, get some air in here. And, and they did it. They were very nice. But it was literally walking into, I mean, I literally I said, breathe. Yeah. And I can't even walk into a room where the candle, if the candle isn't lit in the room, I can smell it. So like it could be way far away, but I can come walk into a room and I can be like, yep. there's a candle in this room. We have a policy in our office where no one can wear perfume at all. Like absolutely no perfume. You can only wear essential oils because I personally it'll it makes me sick like it's unbelievable so what do you think that is that some people can do it and some people can't are they just so used to it or why is it that I when I tell you I cannot even be in a room with someone who has perfume I literally get sick versus someone else could sit there and if they didn't like it it doesn't bother them at all all right, two things about that. So I would say 20 years ago, I was your person that had all the Bath and Body Works everywhere, put all the toxic products on my body, perfumes, everything, did all of it. Um, I started, as I started to detox my body, as I started to make cleaner choices um, with eating, I just remember this one day I was in the shower and the water was pouring on me and I was like, I was thinking about like how our skin is our largest organ. And at that time, nobody was talking about that kind of stuff. And um, and so I, I was thinking about like the these fragrances and and I was thinking about how they were like getting in my skin because I was washing them, putting them on and then washing them off and then putting more fragrances on. And it started like I started praying about it. And I, you know, I was I was always I always pray about, OK, God, what is the next thing that you need me to work on? And I really felt like this was an area that he had brought to my attention, but I ignored it, completely ignored it. Well, then I got pneumonia and um, and it was it was a crazy situation. We, we were in a house that had black mold that we didn't know. And of course, we don't live there um, anymore. But um, the, it was so bad that it like our 
every time I'd go to the chiropractor, um, cause they are more of a diagnostic chiropractor. So my lungs and immune system would show up every single time for six months. And she's like, do you think that has anything to do with the, the flooding you've had in your basement? Sure enough. Um, it was, you know, total mold and we would do this protocol every single time. Well, I got pneumonia and, um, uh, and it was man-made pneumonia. Um, I had got it because a lot of the, um, the the people that I was teaching at the gym were older people, and they um, they had had the breathing treatment um, of the pneumonia vaccine, and um, and that one sheds the most. And so I actually got man-made pneumonia from that. Um, I wasn't around anybody else that would have had any of that kind of stuff. So I had it so bad that it damaged one part of my lower lobe of my lung. And literally at that point, um, I couldn't even walk in anywhere. And I, I became so hyper sensitive to it. And I really feel like it can happen two ways. It can be that you've literally removed all the toxins from your system. And now when you go into a place, you start to have a hyper awareness of what is not good for your body because you've had a time of detox away from it. Or you can have an acute situation like I had where um, at, like it was cleaning products. It was other things. It was like the smell of like window cleaner all the way to, you know, artificial fragrances. Even, you know, when you go different places and they have those plugins. Um, so because we live in the Atlanta area, it's actually cheaper when we fly to have a driver pick us up and go there than it is to find a lot to park your car safely for X amount of days that you are gone. And I had drivers that I would ha I would have to like tell the company. And so it's literally on like all my paperwork, no air fresheners. So this one day, they had this other company that ended up having to pick me up because our flight got delayed and delayed and delayed. Well, when that happened, because, you know, they've got a full schedule, like I got in and I was like, oh, my gosh. And, and the guy did not speak English. And I'm like, no air fresheners. And then he still didn't understand. So, like, I had to call the office. I'm like, there's there's something in this car. So I was like, fragrance. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, what? What do you mean? So I look in the car. I'm like, I'm like in the car trying to find whatever it is. He had those little Christmas tree things under every um, under every single mat. And, I mean, he says, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing. No, it was under every mat. He had them tied underneath the seats, too. And so, like, I had to, like, go. I mean, I was a, like, even with them out for just a few, like, he threw them all away. I literally had to stick my head out the window like a dog on the way home because I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is terrible. Like, it's terrible. And so, of course, they were like so sorry and everything, but I am the exact same way. It is. And and that is a good thing. It is a good thing. You want that kind of awareness because, you know, we've lost that. And that's why when we remove the inflammatory foods, the wheat, the sugar, the gluten, the preservatives, the dairy, the casins, the, you know, the the regular table salt, um, you know, the soy out of our diet then um, even bad coffee out of your diet, then your body cannot put up with the things that are that are are not good anymore. Or you have a hyper awareness to when you've had something, whether it's where you've eaten out and you know how you feel 10 minutes after you start to be able to know that, oh, my gosh, that had table salt in it. I can tell my tongue is puffing up right now. Um they said it didn't, but I know it does because I'm having this reaction. So then you can you go ahead of the the curve. And when you're, you know, traveling or going other places, then you can kind of pre-plan what you're going to do so that you always have a positive result. So good. Well, you are actually the one who taught me how to create my own cleaning products. You showed me that bottle that shows you exactly, you know, how much of this and how yeah. much of that I put in. So talk about kind of what's your favorite blend for that cleaning products of how much uh, and what kind of essential oils you use for that? 
Okay, perfect. So one thing that I do, um, I, I make my own wipes. And um, so like you can get an organic t-shirt and cut it up or you can get organic microfiber towels. Um, and you just combine a few things that you probably have already in your in your um, repertoire or easily at the store. You can use um, isopropyl alcohol or cleansing alcohol, um, um, organic white distilled vinegar, essential oils, and um, and of course uh, water. So um, one of the things that I like to use is that immune boosting blend that I that I mentioned earlier, or I like to use peppermint. Both of those are really, really good. Sometimes I'll co- I'll combine peppermint and tea tree, peppermint um, and lavender. I'll do spearmint and Douglas fir or orange and Douglas fir. Uh, I'll switch them up, you know, all the time. But when I do my heavy duty cleaning products, um, I love to use the immune boosting blend. Uh, because, you know, if I'm going somewhere, like I have one in every single car that I make, I make an all purpose spray and I also make um, my heavy duty spray and I keep that in the car. But when it's, when I, I don't want everything to smell like that. So I make a granite cleaner. And so I take that granite cleaner and I always do that one with peppermint. So I have kind of like my staples that I use within the household, which really helps. And so when you can just add a couple of different, um, things that you probably have or could easily get, then you can start making your own wipes. And then, so I make my wipes. And then when these um, towels are done, I wash them with my wipes and then fold them and then put them back in the rotation. So I have four of them going, four or five of them going at any time in my house. And um, because of that, then I'm always like, you know, combining one to another one and then making a new one. And I have them ready and the kids use those for all different things. So we have one that's like specifically for the things that are outside. And um, and then we have ones that are done inside. So, you know, when you're cleaning your car on the inside or somebody else is cleaning your car for you, um, then you can have them use your wipes and the, the cleaning products. So my cleaning ladies only use all of my cleaning products that I make. And, and they know that they can only use my cleaning products because um, uh, the one time we had a different crew in and they have like non-toxic, but they're still like one of them smells like baby powder. And I just, I cannot, I never could do that smell, but cannot do that smell. And I remember it was like January and I come home and my house smells like chemicals, like, and they're non-toxic chemicals. But like you said, with that little app that you can test things that say made with essential oils or whatever, sometimes things aren't necessarily always non-toxic and may ha- or already have fragrances in them in addition to maybe some essential oils. So I get home and I'm blown away. Like I have to open all the windows and it's January. And I had to because the whole house smelled like the smell. And and so, you know, you can you can create whatever environment you want whether it's at the office or your home or school. And so that's why I, I I make cleaning products for all the teachers. I make cleaning product or, you know, I make the hand sanitizer and the hand soap for all the teachers. And I have my kids always have a readily supply of things. So there there is no, you can create that environment. You don't have to just say, oh, well, we're going into this place and they use this or that. No, you can be the, you can be the solution. Let's just take a minute and let's talk about my latest discovery. Listen, this is the hottest super nutrient packed product that's going to boost your brain and your overall well being. First of all, as soon as I tried this product, I became a fan of it and was blown away by the immediate result. I felt focused, my mind was clear, it just doubled my mental performance. So, This product has the superpowers of mushroom extracts and collagen. So it has four of the best health boosting mushrooms. It's got lion's mane, chaga, cordyceps, and reishi, collagen, and Peruvian cacao. So when you combine all of these, the four mushrooms and the collagen, 
it is going to energize your brain and your body. It's called Kala Genius. So check it out, newtopia.com slash wasteawaygenius and use the code wasteaway10 during checkout. Yeah, I had a friend of mine that one time I was at her house and she was talking to me about making this citrus enzyme glass cleaner. And she actually collected all the citrus peels from like lemons, oranges, tangerines, limes. And she was putting it in the fridge. And then she'd make about, she'd take about two cups of that. And then she'd add a little bit of sugar and then let it sit and ferment um, for about a month. And then, um, you know, she would kind of burp the bottle a little bit so that it w- the bottle wouldn't explode. And then she used it like vinegar in her cleaning solutions. I was like, whoa, like that's that's like when you want to make it to the extreme because like you talk about really taking a lot of time. You're having to wait a month to make like this, you know, a citrus enzyme to clean. But I thought that was kind of it was awesome. But it was just that's a, a lot of work. It's a lot of work. But all of the citrus essential oils are made from peel. So they're the cold, they're, you know, they're done in a, in a cold press fashion. So it's, so a lot of times if people, you know, for, if they're taking certain medication, can't do grapefruit per se, they can use grapefruit essential oil because it's actually made with a peel and that does not interfere with um, medication. So, um, so that's, uh, that's a very um, great way of um, utilizing natural essential oils that you can pull out, out yourself. So this Mama Z had sent me this coffee vanilla body lotion and I put it on. And now I will tell you, my husband could not keep his hands off me. He's like, hey, come here. You smell so good. And um, he, it was amazing. Is that something that you would share what's in that in that or is that a secret? So I use coffee essential oil. And I use um, a vanilla oleo resin, or you can use vanilla absolute. Um, and you mix those two together. The biggest thing is that um, when you when you mix a blend, especially that has, uh, I mean, both of those are a darker color, but um, vanilla essential oil, um, it separates. And so um, even the purest one does, unless they, I mean, if you look at the vanilla bean, it's brown and if you get a vanilla essential oil that's clear then it's 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 made differently so um i i I like the vanilla oleo resin because it's very pure but you have to be really careful to make sure that you get the same amount of drops or if you're going to blend it together um that you know how to properly blend um because if you don't then they will separate so if you're going to make your own, then when you do it, you have to um, you have to really shake it before you do it. Or or if you're making body products, you need to use what's called a pipette instead of a dropper at the top of the essential oil bottle, because if not, they it will separate. Mm. And then you could have something that's not perfectly blended. I'm going to read you a question from Carol from Vienna, Virginia. Okay. My husband just found out that he has debilitating autoimmune disease. He just went to John Hopkins and found out. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I myself am also struggling with massive joint pain. What can we do to relieve some of the joint pain? I know food, but is there anything else? And I will tell you, I'm taking so many supplements and I'm concerned I'm taking so many. So, and she goes on, but that that's the gist is that she's struggling with massive joint pain. Her husband has debilitating autoimmune. He's barely moving, just went to John Hopkins and um, they're taking a lot of supplements. Anything you can recommend for joint pain? Uh, Yes, a a few things. Now in our book, The Essential Oils Diet, one of the big things that we talk about is a lot of times people are taking way too many supplements. So I do a periodic, um, uh, you know, total detoxification where I'm taking nothing. And I think it's good for our bodies to go through periods of time where we're not because um, you're still like, even though some things do a very good, very good for your body, like it can also be one of the things that's filling up your toxic bucket. Um, So 
yes, food is a thing. Um, it's always going to be a factor and, um, and making sure that you're even more strict um, with, with your eating. That's one thing. Utilizing essential oils um, is something key that you can do. Um, and one of the easiest ways um, besides oil pulling is to do a detox bath. So I highly recommend this, especially for joints. Um, now, after you do this, you're probably going to want to take a nap or go to bed. So you're, this is not something that you want to do if you're going to like, you know, get up and move. Um, definitely at night. So it maximizes your sleep. So you really have um, good sleep. A lot of times I ask people, you know, about their thyroid. I ask people about their sleeping patterns um, because you have to find out if there's other hormones, you know, that, that come into um, the factors with that. Um, I always highly recommend to um, seek help from a natural health care provider and not just the DR because um, a lot of times they, I mean, they're trained to go one direction, not that they're not open to other things, but um, you know, when you work with a natural health care provider, they have your full history and you need to have a full understanding of your history in order to make other natural selections um, that work really well for your body. Um, I know our books are all based on science. It's all peer reviewed research. Um, in fact, our, um, our essential oils apothecary, the last book that we wrote, um, the, the section was so big on, um, all of our resources that we used to write it, that it like almost needed a separate book on its own. And, and so it's really important that you, you find, you know, people that you trust, but utilizing um, the detox bath is one of the hugest things you can do. So you take a cup of Epsom salt, one fourth of a cup of Bragg apple cider vinegar or an organic apple cider vinegar with the mother. Um, you want it as concentrated as you can get it. Um, and then you're going to take um, in your hand a tablespoon of an oil that stays liquid. So when you're oil pulling, you do not want to spit that oil into the sink. It will harden in your pipes. And we have had friends that have had hundreds of feet replaced in their house because they just stuck coconut oil down the drain. So you don't want to do that. So when I oil pull, I throw, I, I spit it out into a paper towel, put it in the trash. So for this bath, you do need an oil that stays liquid. So it can be fractionated coconut oil. It can be um, organic jojoba oil. Um, it can be almond oil, but you need a you need a carrier and you want to use one to two drops of lemon essential oil and six to eight drops of lavender essential oil. So some people think, oh, lavender is just to calm everything down. No, lavender. Yes, it will do some of that. It's it's really to open up um, the body so that it can detox properly, um, although you will get some of that benefit as well. And the lemon is really, really cleansing. So you want to go into this bath for 30 to 45 minutes. If you've never done it before, you definitely want your uh, partner to, you know, be near you just because um, it's going to be hot. And then the last um, five minutes, you want to you want to be as covered in the water as you possibly can. For the last five minutes, you want to sit all the way up and then kind of roll onto your your um uh, your legs, and then you want to stand for the last minute. So you kind of slowly work yourself up. And um, the reason for that is, is you have over 10,000 pores on the bottom of your feet. And um, and so you want everything to continue to drain. Now, you also want to um, utilize uh, body care afterwards. You know, your pores close from um, like a minute and a half to three minutes, your pores close. So whatever area is most important to you, you want to, you want to handle first. So, um, I like to use a body cream and depending what I'm working on, or if it's that I want one that, you know, smells nice, um, that's, you know, healthy as well, then I go there. But for, for pain and inflammation and getting that lymphatic system moving, because obviously the body is like holding a lot of that stuff in and it needs to come out. So, chamomile, orange, um, lavender, lemon, cypress, sandalwood. These are some of the ones that you may have 
um, in your repertoire um, that I like for the lymphatic system. The other thing that I really, really, um, that I utilize regularly is um, um, I do liver gallbladder cleanses and I do regular colonics and foot ionization baths. So I use them because, and there, there's fake of all these things out there. I use a closed system colonic, only the closed system. I do not use the open system, aka the poop table. I do not use that. Um, I like a closed system with an attendant because they can tell you a lot about what they're seeing coming out about some of the habits and the things that you can improve upon. Um, so right after that, I like to, um, I usually go on vibration plates and, um, I do rectal ozone, which helps to, um, increase your immune system. And then I do a foot ionization bath. So that's going to help draw things out. The best part about this now, and again, they make fake foot baths too. And you want a really quality foot bath. And when you when you first sit down in the foot bath, as the water starts changing colors, and it will, it changes colors. At the end, it all looks, you know, brown. If some people are really toxic, it will look black. Um, but in the first five to 10 minutes, it's going to tell you what your issues are. Is it joint? Is it your liver or your gallbladder? So that's going to turn green. Is it joints? It's going to be you know, more yellow, um, and orange is color. So it's a good indication of where your body is at to kind of take the next step. And, um, so, and, and if you have lots of foam, um, that's your lymphatic system saying, help, help, I need help. If you have flakes on there, um, and different kind of bubbles, then that means your body is turning other food that you're having into sugar. And you need to avoid that with the plague. So I like using um, some of these kind of diagnostic tools that help you continually um, shed because that really helps. Of course, a lot of those places also have infrared sauna and you can incorporate that with it. Um, I do do that, but I have one at home. So I do that at home. Um, so I highly recommend those things um, for that. Now, you can, um, you know, specifically because your pain point is pain um, in our books, uh, we have and on our website, we have lots of uh, um, recipes for pain blends and other things that you can completely utilize topically. But if we're not going deep into the issue where we're actually cleansing it out, then it's only going to be, you know, surface things that we're treating when we need to treat the underlying con condition underneath. And I totally agree with you. It's probably way too much um, on the um, uh, the supplements. We once met this girl who, and we talk about her in our first book um, and um, the healing power of essential oils. And her hands were literally like, she had so much autoimmune stuff going on, like her hands were peeling and like in so much pain and she could do nothing about it. And she was on like a $2,000 a month regimen of supplements that she had got at this place that did all this diagnostic testing. I'm not going to list it, but, um, and they were like, you need this, 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 and this, or you're not going to make it. Well, she wasn't getting better and she was spending $2,000 a month. After a month of literally taking her off of everything, um, she she did do the GAPS diet for a little bit, um, and then she just completely shifted her lifestyle. All of that went away, every single part of that. And in our essential oils diet, we walked people through, and we saw so many people with chronic pain and fatigue and stuff, like come completely changed like it, it changed everything and they got off medicines and all different kinds of things and they did it with their you know with their doctor and their natural health care provider as that was their goal you know and pain was the forefront of that so i i highly suggest um seeking your options because you definitely have options and um and and that will help with pain some of those pain blends and topical things, but the detox bath is going to help. Uh, and you can do that regularly. You can do that two to three times a week unless you're like ill. And then um, you can do it more frequently as well. I want you to expand on the foot soak that you're talking about. Are, are you talking about the ones that you like buy from Amazon where you, you know, you plug it in and then they 
it has all the different colors. Is that the ones that you're talking about? Okay, so a a real um a real foot bath, they they have certain ones that and so no, the ones that you can find on Amazon are a lot of times from China and it mimics what a real foot bath does. So a real foot bath, um, it you when you, you they actually have to put Himalayan salt in there. There has to be a certain level of salt. There's an ionizing unit that goes in there. The water is hot and it makes a chemical change that happens with your feet. It helps to detox heavy metals, helps to detox um, uh, tobacco, alcohol, um, joints, uh, you name it. It, it. it detoxes a lot of those things. Um, and uh, ever, I always say that everybody has like an output place in their body. So let's say candida is your thing. Um, people usually have armpit issues, under the breast issues, feet issues, or, or scalp issues. Um, when your body is flared up, those um, output areas flare up. When um, when I've talked to people after a foot bath, it's literally like, put that away. Or they had so much pain um, and inflammation that it gave them a break for this period of time. Now, you want that period of time to be your regular life, not just like after a foot bath. If you go in one of these fake things that you buy just because you don't want to go into a place that actually, because these units are not cheap. So you want to go to somebody who has a quality um, foot ionization bath. Um, so, and and I can actually tell you what the brand is um, that I recommend to people. Um but they, they are expensive and they, they do have um, units that are made for a clinical setting and they do have home units. For me, I'm I'm kind of like of the of the uh, philosophy, like, why do I want to have a home, you know, and I can, ha- you know, have someone use the professional unit or, you know, if I decide to ever, you know, get one, I'm going to get a professional unit. I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. Um, all right. Let me give you the name of that. Well, while you while you're looking that up, I'll I'll mention one more thing. So, you know, I got this new app and I'm obsessed with it, and it's called Yuk- Yuka Y U K A, and I'll post a video of it. But basically, what you do is you just scan items, so any cleaning products, makeup, food, anything you want, and it gives you a rating of what's in it, and then tells you why this isn't good. And I will tell you, the other day I went to the store and, you know, most of the soaps, shampoos, conditioners, and, you know, any kind of thing for your body has sodium lauryl sulfate in it. I mean, it is, even if it says like made with essential oils, I mean, they'll do this, no parabens, no this, no that. It'll say all these things that they don't have. It is almost impossible. I'm telling you, I would... If I had to guess, I would say 3%. I mean, it's things that, you know, like Dr. Bronner's or um, any kind of castor oil or um, not castor oil, but um, Castile oil soap. But it is the, the chemicals added to products to create suds. And it really is toxic for your body. And it, I mean, it's almost the second ingredient in every soap that you see. It's very difficult to find something that doesn't it. Um, but you guys on your website have so many different DIY things yeah. like different shampoos and soaps and all these different recipes that you can see on there for completely free. And some of them are hard and some of them are really not that bad. Like some take a little bit of time. Right. But you've got stuff on there that it's really reasonable, you know, to do and to make. And it it doesn't take that long. Really, it doesn't. And the thing is, is that um, so the the coconut surfactant um, that that uh, because then you that that sudsing thing, because people think that they have to be squeaky clean to make it clean. But that's not true. And using a coconut surfactant is like in more of the natural products that are very clean that's how they do it because um, you can you can actually wash your face with coconut oil. 
Is it going to like squeak? No, but you really don't want to squeak. If you squeak, you're way too clean and you're actually like stripping the microbiome from your skin. And there is this brain, skin, gut connection, and all of them have to work harmonious. And so when you are making products, um, you know, on your own, they don't have to be that intense. No, there are some that are more intense and some of them are worth making if you have certain ailments or whatever. Um, and like you said, that that you can actually go to the store, scan some things. Let's say you didn't want to make your own shampoo or your own conditioner. Then you could find a clean, organic, unscented one and you could always add the essential oils that you needed to it. And so let's say you did that. Then you would want to use um, eight drops for every one ounce of the that as a general whole, it's eight drops for every one ounce of your material. So if it's eight, eight ounces, you're going to put 64 drops in. And you stir that kind of stuff up. And depending on what you're needing, then you incorporate that in, in your lifestyle. So let's say it's hand soap. Um, you can, you again, you can find a good Castile one that you can use. You can find a few different ones that you like to put together that are completely clean. And you can make your own hand soap that way. You don't have to make everything from scratch. You can, but you know, not everybody has time to DIY everything. And even if you're keeping up with your household, I have six children. So, you know, um, it if I can do it, I know you can do it. And um, we want to make uh, our website easily available for people to be able to utilize those recipes so that you can put some of those things into action now. Mm. So let's talk about poop for just a second. I um, I talked to three of my friends and and they were three of them were just really sick and they had gone, it was funny, they went to three different functional medicine doctors and they both, they all told me about different protocols that they were putting them on. And I said, you know what, send me, and they were like, I'm doing a lot better, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, great. And I said, well, send me the supplements that you're taking. And they all sent me these supplements. First of all, they were paying $4,000 a month, a month to be with this functional medicine doctor and supplements, which is outrageous. So I started doing some digging and I found the supplements that they were on and I just decided to find it and become a distributor for it. And I just now sell some of the supplements for it. Um, and I just sell it at cost because I do think the products are good and I just am not going to charge someone $4,000 a month to dig supplements. Um, if you're interested in that, just email us at questions at ChantelRayWay.com. But I want to go into this idea of the whole pooping thing, because a lot of people that I've talked to are like, I don't want to take all these supplements. I'm taking way too many, but I have to take certain things because I can't. I'm Otherwise, I'm not pooping regularly. I'm either not pooping. Like you said, you should really be pooping if you're eating two meals a day then you should be pooping twice a day. If you're eating three meals in a day, then you should really be pooping three times a day. That is the optimal thing to do, but that is easier said than done. So talk about some different things that you have seen if they want to kind of cut back on supplements or just take a few supplements, what do they need to do to get their pooping under control and really getting it so that they're going after every single meal. All right, I'm going to give you the two things that I would start people on, um, hands down, and then I'm going to backtrack and tell you where I came from. Um, okay, so the two things that I highly would recommend is going to be aloe, and and this is like aloe, whole leaf aloe, preservative free, whole leaf aloe, and um, drinking that regularly. The Lily of the Desert has a good organic one that is, again, it's whole leaf, preservative free. And um, and that incorporating that in your lifestyle will very much help, as well as that magnesium that I talked about earlier. I love the Natural Vitality um, uh, magnesium. And that is one that by far, so it says on the package, you know, start at a half a teaspoon twice a day, and then you can go up to 
you know, up from there. So if now if you're highly detoxing or losing weight and stuff like that, you can really go up to a tablespoon twice a day. But there's somewhere between a half of a teaspoon and a tablespoon that you'll find your happy medium. You do not want to be blowing up the toilet every time you go. If you are, that's going to be like too much. So you want to get things more uh, naturally moving in your body. Um, and so you start that by starting small and working your way up to find what your happy medium is on those two. All right. So backtrack where I came from. I wish I would have known some of those things prior to that. Um, colon cancer is in my family. So pooping has always been a big thing. I was diagnosed with IBS um, and literally I was like running for the bathroom. Well, I went to the DR and they they were like, oh, you need to take this medicine. Now, before I did um, a 10 day water fast and really God healed me and I got off of all the prescription drugs, I literally did a 10 day water fast and God healed my body. Um, I only got off of one medicine prior to that. And then the other ones were like all digestive and like so many. OK, I was on 11 different prescription drugs and this was in my early 20s. And um, and so I really felt God wanted to heal me. Well, one of them was this medicine that was supposed to help um, IBS. So instead, it took my overactive system and it literally like was supposed to bring it to like in the place of the medium place where they give it to people who are overactive and underactive and it's supposed to make them go to the center. Well, that's not what happened at all. I literally like could not go to the bathroom, could not go to the bathroom. And then I would have to take laxatives in order to go to the bathroom. So you don't want to be in that position. It was very bad. And I got to the place where I'm like, I know that like this is not normal. OK. And um, so I I had gotten off of all the prescription drugs and my body was still not 100 percent normal yet. So I was really praying what the next step was. So I went to um, I went to a colon hydrotherapist. And I had my first colonic and they were like, well, you need to just be taking a fiber instead. So I had a follow up appointment two weeks after my first one. And I literally ate three meals a day for two weeks, ate the fiber, and I did not poop, not at all for two weeks. And um, so I went back for my follow up and I'm like, um, OK, so like when does this stuff kind of kick in? Because I'm like, really feel like loaded <laughs> well yeah because i hadn't gone to the bathroom in two weeks and i never had not gone to the bathroom well within that time and doing lymphatic massage and it literally was like two and a half hours on the table like getting cleansed out my body retrained itself and i didn't need those things anymore and um uh, and so you know sometimes it's that other things that are supposed to fix other problems, create other problems when it comes in in the form of prescriptions. And we just want a shiny pill that is like, OK, that that takes care of that. But every time there is that, there's always plot positives and negatives. And so utilizing essential oils and some of the other natural things that we already have that God has made for us, a lot of times we can actually do all of that. It costs us more time because we have to research those things and we have to find them out and how they work with our body. And a lot of times the natural cures, um, it takes longer for them to take effect, but then they're long lasting. And so, but it's worth it. And so that's when I started it, um, um, learning about the master cleanse and um, doing other detoxes and cleanses. And my body completely healed itself. And I still u utilize colonics. I do... Um, I do liver gallbladder cleanses. Uh, I regularly um, like we have this um, this fat burning matcha latte that we make people. We made it for you. And and then we went on the 700 club and the, the people in the kitchen forgot to put the stevia in there. Remember that? <laughs> that was hysterical. And she oh was like, this is interesting or something like that. Oh, this is something to get used to or something. And uh, so and and utilizing um spearmint uh because we said we, this is an acquired taste oh yeah that's what she said 
Yeah, and it is so it is so good. I remember I got back to the room and you had texted me and you're like, I can't believe <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, we incorporate um the immune boosting essential oil plus peppermint in our fat burning matcha latte. Well, if let's say you're working on your liver gallbladder area and really like, you know, getting your purification systems of your body to to be more um, proactive, then you can add spearmint into that. And that really helps. And so um, our last book, The Essential Oils Apothecary, is a deeper dive into what the chronic disease, um, uh, what chronic disease is and what are certain things that will help with like the biggest pain points for all these different areas of chronic disease. So as you're doing the other things and you're detoxing and you're um, working on all these other areas of your life and really taking that toxic bucket that might be filled or overflowing and like starting to like chop it off and and chuck um, all the stuff out of it, then you can utilize some of these other pain points to really get ahead. Um, because when you have tons of pain and inflammation, you don't want to move, but you need to move to move your lymphatic system to get it to move out of your body. So there's this, you know, this like, I think I can chugging um, railroad track um, train that it, it takes a while to get that train moving. But when you do, then you get past that break for point and then you you see that there is light at the end of the tunnel. So work on those pain points, incorporate some of these other things that we've utilized that we've mentioned, and then start working towards um, freeing your body up in some of these other areas that maybe you haven't looked at yet. And of course, I always like Isaiah 58 that 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 talks about true fasting and the benefits of that. It says that he will bring forth um, healing speedily. And so we know that with with man, um, you know, not all things are possible, but with God, all things are possible. So as we look to the Lord and we're open ourselves up as we pray and say, OK, God, what is the next thing I need to work on, you know, to get to get, because I know you don't want me in pain. Um, you know, he's very clear. He wants you healed and whole from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. And it is possible. So knowing that and saying, okay, God, I, I'm at your feet. Let me know what I need to do. I remember when I was, I had to like, you know, I learned how to cook in a, in a, in a way that, you know, my mom did a lot with, with culinary herbs, cooking with herbs, but they, it was for the taste of things, not necessarily the medicinal value. And so I had some of those, you know, good bones as far as like learning what I do in the kitchen. But I literally had to pray over my hands and say, God, I don't know what I'm doing, but you do. So anoint my hands so I'm able to do what you've called me to do and I'm able to heal my body. Oh, I love it. Well, we are out of time. I wish we could go on and on, but tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Absolutely. Um, you can find us at naturallivingfamily.com and it's Natural Living Family with Dr. Z and Mama Z. And we are also on Facebook and Instagram, um, Dr. Z and Mama Z and Natural Living Family. And we'd love to have you be a part of our Natural Living Family. Oh my gosh, so good. Thank you guys. And you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now.